after a gap of eight years. On the field, Meath faced an All-Ireland selection, captained by one of their own legendary players, Colm O'Rourke, and containing five men from the Mayo team that lost to Meath on the previous Sunday. It was a fun match in aid of goal, the sports people's charity, and featured some rare sights, such as Charlie Redmond of Dublin playing in a Meath jersey and Meath manager Sean Boylan playing in goal. After the match, three of the Meath team took time out from the celebrations to reflect on the championship campaign of 1996. Captain Tommy Dowd, half forward Graham Garrity, and manager Sean Boylan. At what stage in 1996 did you actually say, we have a chance? Uh, two weeks and two days before the first round match against Carlo, we played a challenge match against Tyrone, and I was very happy with what I saw. It was our fifth uh, challenge match and, uh, in 11 days, and there was a pattern that emerged from that game that gave Eamon O'Brien, Frank Foley and myself a confidence uh, that these lads knew what we wanted uh, it nearly helped us even to pick the team and from that day we felt that if we got a little bit of luck at all we were going to be able to compete again at the highest level. Meade's first opponents in the Leinster Championship campaign were Carlo, who had already impressed with championship victories over Wexford and Wicklow. A lot of Meade people going to Crow Park felt that Carlo would definitely beat Meade because they had played very well in a couple of games against Wicklow. I think we were afraid coming back to Mead if we if we hadn't beat Carlow and Crow Park that day, and everyone performed to their full potential, and we we won by a few points in the end. Tommy Dowd out ahead of uh, Huey Brennan. Beats uh, Huey Brennan quite easily, takes his shot, and a good score by uh, Tommy Dowd, the Dunderry man. Any hopes that Carlo had of causing a shock were quickly dashed. Meath had eight points on the scoreboard before Carlo began to score. By half time, it was Meath 14, Carlo 3. In the second half, the misery continued for Carlo. Meath continued to pick out the scores. Trevor Giles into Brendan Riley. He blasted it off the uh, crossbar a few moments ago and he curls that one in with his left foot and puts it over the bar. Barry Callaghan cuts inside John Wynn. Shakes off a couple of tackles over the far side to uh, Jim McGuinness through to Trevor Giles, Graham Garrity, Graham Garrity right footed and straight over the bar. Mead scored 10 points in all in the second half and at the end it was Mead 24 points Carlo, six. The mood in the camp was very, very good after that. We had a good team, we had a very young team. You know, a lot of the players became a lot more optimistic and felt that within our own ability we were capable of getting to a Leinster final. In the Leinster semi-final, Meath faced Leash and got off to a flying start. A Leinster final place beckons for either Meath or Leash, which is it going to be? Certainly, history would suggest Meath. But there's something a little bit different about Leash this year. Let's see what happens. Even Kelly getting inside Tom Conroy. Sending in a ball which is going straight over the bar. What a start for Kelly from Drumree in County Meath. The first point after 26 seconds of play. That's what you call a good start for Meath. Barney Marr. Quickly taken. Cross touch. Leaving Damien Delaney down. Oh, Tom. Tommy Dowd. This must be a goal. Gives it. Oh, what a start. Brendan Riley. Has Leash arrived in Crow Park yet? because Meade certainly have. They took the early bus and they've arrived at headquarters. What about this for a disaster for Leash? I couldn't believe that Tommy Dowd was straight through. Brendan Riley was supporting him. Great goal. Leash burned a golden goal chance and from there they were playing catch up while Meade concentrated on some good point scoring. Paddy Reynolds 
leaving it for Brendan Riley onto the left boost and over the bar. That's a good point by the full forward. A goal and a point now he scored. Mead once more, Graham Garrity. Brian Kerwin still in hot pursuit. He gets away from Garrity. Puts it over the bar. Mead's led at half time by six points. One goal and eight to five points. In the second half, it was Leash who got the better start. Tony Marr does a hula hula. Quick ball in. That's a good ball, in fact. Gathered by Huey Emerson. What a, Mead can do in the first half, Leash can do in the second. The hula hula that Marr did at midfield might have confused Mead, but it certainly didn't fool Huey. A wonderful catch ahead of the Mead pull back, Darren Fay, and the finish was clinical. Meath, however, began to score a run of points, started by Graham Garrity, who was relishing the switch from half back to half forward. Graham Garrity. Good point. His second of the match. Tommy Dow calling for it on the outside. There's a point here. And it's a typical Meath classic. Leash stopped the route with a Delaney point, but by the 28th minute, they were eight points behind, down to 14 men when Michael Lawler had been sent off, and here they were facing a penalty. Leash did get the last three points of the game to put some respectability on the scoreline, which at full time read Meath. Two goals, 14 points. Leash, one goal and nine. What was the day or the time you decided that Graham Garrity was going to be a forward now? Uh, a few years ago, I played Graham in a, in a match against Russ Common, uh, centre half forward. And he played a fantastic game. I think it was 1993. And in the back of my mind from then, this was something that at some stage I'd love to put him there. But it was the question of his natural and his instinctive thing and all his underage matches have been played in the half-back position. And Graeme is an inventive player. Uh, he's an attractive player. Um, it wouldn't let you disrespect other players, but he would see it and he'd, be, he'd just want to, to express himself and so on. Now in the modern day, it's not as easy to do that from the half-back position because at the way if something breaks down that it can be exploited. So we felt that the next best thing was you know, to play him in the half forwards. But the quarter final of the league, you know, we actually picked him for the first time as a wing half forward. And most important of all was that he was prepared to have a go at it. Sean is a great man, he's tremendous uh, willpower and a way of getting things across to the younger players. And the respect that he got from the younger players, I say, was has a lot to do with the success of the team as well. Because uh, if you have a manager that hasn't the respect of all the players, I don't think he can go anywhere anyway. In the other Leinster semi-final, the reigning All-Ireland champions Dublin got a scare against Louth. With 11 minutes left in the game, an Alan Doherty score gave Louth a one-point lead. Louth have it here. Can they do it? Alan Doherty puts it over the bar. And Louth are in front. Incredibly, the All-Ireland champions are in trouble in Navan. But the dub survives thanks to big Joe McNally. A tester for the loud backs, punched away, pulled on, comes to Joe McNally, the first chance, he's loving the match yet again. Charlie Redmond, hitting it well, dropping it right in under the crossbar, Joe McNally, is that a goal? Yes it is. Charlie Redmond added a point to leave the full-time score Dublin one goal and nine, Loud eight points. Only once in 23 years has a Leinster final been played without either Meath or Dublin, and very often the two of them. And in 1996, it was Meath and Dublin again. Meath had a score to settle. In the Leinster final 12 months previously, they were well and truly beaten by Dublin, losing by 10 points. They were determined to fare better in 1996. The training sessions were intense 
and every oh. member of the Meath panel was truly committed. It didn't matter what it took to get to training, you just had to be there. Panelist Kevin Cow had his boss from team sponsor Ski Pack drop him off on the way home. In Meath, your sort of your value or your worth is measured by being able to beat Dublin in the Leicester final. But that's as a as a you know a, a backhanded compliment to Dublin because you know Dublin would always be treated as you know there's no such thing as a bad Dublin team. Um, You'll never have an easy match against them. They mightn't play well always, but they, they know how to stop you from playing well also. And they were currently All Ireland champions, so All Ireland champions, Leinster champions for four years. Uh, there was a huge, there was a, it was a huge battle, and we felt going into that that we would have a great chance, provided we had luck, and provided we had everything going with us. And I think Forston did smile on us in the day. When we needed players on that day, we needed players very, very badly and there was no room for hiding and there was, they needed a lot uh, of honesty to be out there in Crow Park on, in very, very bad conditions and a lot of fellas showed through heart, through commitment, determination, but overall it was a real team performance, Jimmy. There was no individuals on the team, you know, but it was all down to teamwork. To beat Dublin, you need teamwork and that's, that's what it was. In the past, we also always concentrated on John O'Leary kick out because the type of boot he wears on a wet day tends to skid off under the Hogan standing side. And it did indeed slice off his boot, Cullum. Graham Garrity giving it to centre back Enda McManus. Pumping high balls in. Well gathered by Evan Kelly. And Evan puts it over the bar. It took almost six minutes of play in the first half. He started proceedings. Colum Coyle, pumping it long again, and again Evan Kelly does well, Brendan Riley's available, surely a point, yes it is. Breaking ball falls for Paul Curran, Jason Sherlock is the target, knocked away by Darren Fay, comes over to Desi Farrell, good play, this is Kieran Whelan. Goes for the point, and he gets it. Dublin are a bit dead in their boots at the moment. Mead playing with much more exuberance. Jimmy McGuinness, the long ball to Dermot TC inside, but uh, well taken care of. Given away, however, to Tommy Dowds, and Tommy puts it over the bar. The captain has scored for the Royal County, and Mead go back in front. Oh, lovely feeling by Brian Steins. He aided and better by some misjudgment by the Mead midfielders. Keith Barr, Pat Gilroy, Jim Gavin. Cutting through, and the ball just squeezing out of his hands. Enda McManus can't hold it either. Strength will come for a lot here. Kieran Whelan, good shot, good point. Well done, Kieran Whelan. This is Damien O'Brien from Luke and Sarsfields. Cuts inside. Paddy Reynolds. Sends in a ball over towards Brian Steins. Cuts inside to McDermott. Oh, and a good save by Peter Martin. Brian Steins, not noted as a scorer, but really there, he was intent on goal. Trevor Giles again. It's gone over the bar. Meath get a little bit closer. Graham Garrity from Central Stone, pumping one in. Oh, Paddy Bourne, well done. Well, two of the finest catches we've seen have been by Dublin players, Paddy Bourne and Charlie Redmond. Given away. Comes over, Tevin Kelly. Back to Trevor Giles. Going. And 
out seeking and getting the equaliser. Level for the third time in Croke Park. Brian Steins giving it back to the man who gave it to him in the first place, Paul Curran. Over towards Jason Sherlock. And he got inside this mead cover. Back to him and Heary. Weaving a lovely pattern and scoring a magnificent point. The wing back from St Vincent's shows his forwards what they should have been doing. Dublin lead by two. It's a terrible ball by John McDermott. But there's enough uh, space left uh, to gather it before it reaches the sideline. Graham Garrity. Lobbing one in. It's danger for Dublin. Getting it back out to Trevor Giles. To Brendan Riley. Gets a boot to it and puts it over the bar. Croke Park has certainly come alive. The tension is mounting to fever pitch. Right to the final whistle. One point between the teams yet again. On the field of play, it's Trevor Giles. Hits it straight over the crossbar. Four points for Trevor Giles. And now it's everything to play for yet again. Since their first final in 1894, they've not had another draw in a final. In other matches, they've had plenty, as I'm sure you're well aware of. 1991 was a first round. This is a final. Going through is John McDermott. Is this the winner, perhaps? It's over the bar. Barry Callahan from Dunderry puts Mead people rejoicing. The Blues have to throw everything forward now. Mick Deegan pumping it forward. Up towards Charlie. Leaves it fall behind him for Dizzy Farrell. They must not fall, or else they concede an easy free. Desi Farrell still trying to swing one across. There's plenty of Dublin players there. Brian Stein, Sir Dermot Harrington trying to make an angle for himself. He loses possession, and Jimmy McGuinness is there. Still McGuinness. Anywhere will do, but he shows his composure by giving it out to his midfield partner, Johnny McDermott, from screen. Barry Callaghan, he's the corner forward. Pumping it up towards Graham Garrity, knocking it forward. Tommy Dowd, Garrity has gone inside. He doesn't see him, he goes for the point, and the captain gets the point. What excitement in Croke Park. The blood spatter captain has given his team a little bit of breathing space. Dublin, the All-Ireland and Leinster champions are out. Mead are the new Leinster champions. And they did it with passion and heart and determination. What a gritty performance by the Royal County. This is the moment that all of Mead will celebrate. The dethroning of the All-Ireland champions Dublin and Mead being crowned Leinster champions for 96. Mayo's first outing in the championship was against London, where they came out the winners 115 to 111. That's close enough, but it earned them a place in the Connacht semi-final against Roscommon. The game was dominated by the place kickers, Morris Sheridan from Mayo and Derek Duggan Roscommon, who had got the first two scores of the game. Mayo's first point, however, came from play players calling for it. James Horan was one of them, but it runs on instead there towards David Nestor. Nestor's kick is good and it goes over the bar. Twelve minutes into the game, Sheridan opened his account to bring the sides level two points each. David Nestor. Comes back here. Horan belting it and putting it over the bar. James Horan from Ballancover. That Horan point put Mayo ahead for the first time. Duggan level it again for us common before Colin McManaman regained the lead for Mayo. Passes to Colin McManaman. 
And Colin McMenamin this time puts a strike between the posts. Well, the last three scores of the half came from place kicks. And this excellent Sheridan point gave Mayo a lead of two points at half time. In the second half, Mayo increased their lead to four with good scores from James Horn and James Nallan. Back to James Nallan, and he puts it over the bar. He deserved that. Then Ross Common began to come back into the game. A good point from Kieran Heenan started a run of five points without reply. And the fifth of those from Neil O'Donoghue gave Ross Common a one-point lead. 40 metres out. O'Donoghue next to come forward. Niall O'Donoghue's shot, belted in, a put over the bar. With five minutes left, Roscommon still had a point lead. Holmes taking the free kick to the totally unmarked Liam McHale, momentarily that was. Inside for Declan Sweeney. Nice transfer back to McHale, and he puts it over the bar. Liam McHale from Ballina, his first point in this match. With the sides now level, Sheridan scored two free kicks from Mayo to bring his tally to six and all. But the last say of the match went to Lee McHale. That's held up over there by James Horan. And he leaves it behind. Liam McHale back up assisting him, elegantly taking it away from danger. And that's a great point! A terrific point by Liam McHale. A three-point winning margin at the end. Mayo 14, Roscommon 11. And Mayo were next to meet Galway, who had overcome Leitrim in the other Connacht semi-final. The first 15 minutes of the final was dominated by one man, John Casey. Comes to John Casey. This man is a good footballer now. And that is a beautiful point. John Casey, oh, a cracker! A five-point lead for Mayo. But then Galway started to come back into it, and with 20 minutes played, they had a goal. Cutting it inside to Charlotte Bennett, the ball goes away from him, comes off the post, blocked on the line, incredible. No, this time, Fergal O'Neill. Well, what drama. Charlotte Fallon, there's a chance here for Galway, and they put it over the bar. Good work indeed, this time by Shea Walsh. That score left one point between the teams. By half-time, Mayo had increased that to two, so the score at the break, 1-6 to 1-4. As the rain continued to pour down in the second half, it was Galway who scored three unanswered points to give them a one-point lead. But Morris Sheridan came to the rescue of Mayo, first with a point and then with a penalty. A kick that could decide the Connacht title. It's in! And Mayo have scored! And Castle Bar is now alive to the Green and Reds. Galway three points down but not out. Five minutes left, they had reduced the gap to one and were pressing hard. Now Finnegan, it looks like a good move that could lead to an equaliser. It's dropping over the bar. But soon after, all that good work was wiped out by a well-worked Mayo goal. John Casey, one goal and two points to his credits. Gives a ball into David Brady. Tends an infinity. Finish it to Dempsey. Goal! Mayo have responded magnificently. John Mohan salutes his boys. And surely now the Connacht champions have been dethroned. This time there was no comeback for Galway. Mayo just continued on scoring to leave it at the finish. Three goals and nine points to one goal and eleven. Galway had been dethroned, Mayo were the new Connacht champions.
The Ulster Football Championship was as difficult to win as it was to predict. Derry were talked about as the most likely to succeed, but they went out in the semi-final to the champions to Rome. Meantime, Down had progressed via Donegal, Monaghan and Cavan to the Ulster final in Clonus on July the 28th. The first half had two spells of one-way scoring. First Tyrone featuring three excellent points from Brian Doerr. Punch down there by Sean McLaughlin towards Canavan. On it before Burns. Nicely off to Doerr. Brian Doerr over the bar. All great football. Here's Stinky McBride. He's got Doerr inside him. He's quick. He's elusive. He's in scoring range. And he takes it. Brian Doerr, his second point of the game. Kieran McBride turns around, looks for Canavan. Nice one into the space. Canahan also down. It's Brian Dewar, chance of a score. And this man is inspired. He is the best forward in the park today. Brian Dewar. Then came an excellent Peter Canavan point from a marvellous McCallum pass. Seamus McCallum, fiercely strong man, McCallum. Looking for it into Peter Kahneman, it's a super pass. The Kahneman goes for his first score of the game, and it's a simple score, but what a magnificent pass by centre-back Seamus McCallum. In that entire first half, Down only had one score from play. Four of the points were freezed by Gregory McCartan. John Trainer got the one from open play. Half-time, Tyrone, six points, Down, five points. Good start to the second half for Tyrone. Jared Cavlin on the score sheet. And then the moment that was eventually to make the difference between the two sides. Locks down to McBride. He's inside Burns. Now he's got two assistants. Peter Canavan. Canavan goes for goal! <laughs> 28 minutes gone. Greg Blaney, a point for down. Two points between them. But the final score of the game came six minutes from the end. A Pascal Canavan point for Tyrone. Final score, Tyrone 1-9, down North 9. In Munster, the provincial decider was to be played again between those great old rivals Kerry and Cork. Kerry had beaten Tipperary and Waterford en route to the final. Cork in the first round had beaten Limerick, but then took two games to overcome a very determined player. 16 minutes into the game, Eamon Breen scored a good point to level the scores at three each. Eamon Breen going for his score. Had the confidence to go for it, had the accuracy too. Great score, inspirational by Eamon Breen. Ten minutes later, Niall Cahalan scored. Two points between the sides. Don Davis gives it to Niall Cahalan, who'll go for his score. And there's Niall Cahalan. With five minutes left in the first half, Billy O'Shea brought the sides level again. Billy O'Shea for Kerry. Going for his score, Billy O'Shea. Did it come in? Yes, it did. A great score by Billy O'Shea. Billy O'Shea at left half forward with Kieran O'Sullivan, who's uh, clearly carrying an injury. Good ball down to Darrell Kaneda. He hasn't won too much off Mark O'Connor in this game, but here comes Darrell Kaneda. Mark O'Connor sticks to him. Good defensive work by Mark O'Connor, but Darrell Kaneda up to punch it over the bar. Good score for Kerry, and it's Kerry who go in front, coming up to half-time in Porky Creek. That was to be the last score of that half, ending Kerry six points, Cork five points. Straight away into the second half, Paul McGrath got a good point to put Cork level again but they had no time for celebration before Kerry had put them in arrears. And then Cork were back again with Marco Sullivan. Marco Sullivan trying ever so hard to get into the game. Played it very tight to Joe Kavner from the goal. A goal tight for Joe Kavner. A great save put over the bar by Declan O'Keefe. There was never more than two points between the sides and with 12 minutes left in the game, they were level yet again at 10 points each. 
Callum Corkery having for him an off day scored only his second point to give Cork the lead. Well, that was to be Cork's last score of the game. Liam Hassett brought the sides level for the sixth time. And then Morris Fitzgerald kicked two magnificent long-range points. Drives it! Drives it high and handsome and over the bar! And here's the great Morris Fitzgerald to put it over the bar. The final score of the game went to Killian Burns to give Kerry a three-point victory in the Munster final. A great run forward by Killian Burns. This man is electrifying the crowd. He's young, he knows no fear. Paddy O'Shea's young team were Munster champions after a gap of four years. So the last four in the championship was now known. Kerry versus Mayo, Meath versus Tyrone in the All-Ireland semi-finals. The 1996 season produced some great goals. We've seen some of them already, and here is the best of the rest. Oh, a miss there by Liam Cronin, who slipped on the ground. Darrow Canada coming forward. This can wrap it up, and may do so. Gormley on it, runs in the ring, goes down with the players back for Derry again to Joe Brawley. Yes! Brawley cuts it in the cobwebs. Keeper chipping and chipping to the net. It was a lovely little laugh by Keeper. That's first to Redmond O'Neill, who spotted the centre half forward David Riley in a good position. David Riley goes for the goal and gets it. Vincent Cal is the target man. He releases the Jason Riley. Another again, a good dummy, and he's on bad luck. Hits the post. He's on it again. Oh, yes. That is great reaction time from Jason Riley. Hitting it well, dropping it right in under the crossbar. Joe McNally! Oh, allowed to hop over the fullback's head. Peter Whitnell is in. He releases to Linden. Linden gets it in. It's in the net. Oh, a terrific goal. Mayo went into the All-Ireland semi-final against Kerry, very much the underdogs. Although Kerry had not won an All-Ireland in 10 years, there were expectations among their supporters of a final place at the very least. We are gold, we are green, we are bodies fight machines! <laughs> Mayo, after all, hadn't beaten Kerry in an All-Ireland semi-final for nearly 50 years, and many feared it would be another hard luck story this time. With 25 minutes played, Mayo took a two-point lead with a John Casey point. Here's John Casey, lively, took off the blocks, inside the cover of Mike Hassett, second chance, and he boots it over the bar. Morris Fitzgerald's fourth point of the game brought the gap back to one. Then two goals were scored inside 60 seconds of play. Morris Fitzgerald holding possession and slipping it inside to Sean Burke. 
who'd come up in support. Johnny Crowley calling for it on the left-hand side. He surrenders it in the end, however, to James Nallon. And as far as the other James, James Horan. Now it's the turn of Mayo to launch a counter-attack. Liam McHale from Ballina, Stevenites. Inside for James Nallon. He started the move. Can he finish it here? He can! It's no more than Mayo has deserved. Kerry paid the price of messing around with the ball in their forward line. Seamus Moynihan not picking up. Liam McHale allowing James Nallon to come forward. Morris Fitzgerald caught as well, not following back. And it's just what Mayo deserve, a goal. Great goal by James Nallon. Oh, and at the other end, it's gone in. What a rapid response, just as we were studying the pictures at one end. This is what happened at the other. The ball kicked in, missed completely by the goalkeeper. And Kerry back in it again. By half-time, Mayo were four points to the good, thanks largely to the accurate free-taking of Morris Sheridan. Early in the second half, it was the other Morris and the other free-taker, Fitzgerald, who was displaying his skills. With 15 minutes played, he had converted four free kicks. Will this be his eighth point in all in the match? Yes, it is. Wonderful contribution for the green and gold of Kerry. With 23 minutes gone, Mayo had a two-point lead and both teams were playing some good football. Two sides putting on a gritty and determined performance in the second half to try and earn that place in the final. Casey hits it and Casey puts it over the bar. John Casey's third point. Partial block on it. It comes here to Mike Hassett. Now Killian Burns. Kerry building, they have time. Well, oh, that's a great ball inside. Eamon Breen kicking. And he's put it over the bar. It was a wonderful ball in there towards Eamon Breen. Mayo there in numbers. They had three against one. Morris Fitzgerald supported now by Billy O'Shea. Back to James Nellon it comes outside into the centre towards Noel Kennelly. Kennelly the captain. Will he have the honour of leading Mayo out in this year's All-Ireland final? Back to Casey. They'd love to play in it. And maybe will so yet. This prodigious talent kicks his fourth point and keeps the green and the red of Mayo that little bit ahead, heading into the home straight. A three-point lead for Mayo, which Kerry reduced to two with four minutes left. Then Mayo went about putting the result and the game beyond doubt. About three and a half minutes to go. Does he connect well? He does. A sixth point for Morris Sheridan and the green and the red or the red and the green here celebrating having a terrific evening at Croke Park and they've got the ball back again and James Horan is hit it and it's a goal oh an absolutely bizarre goal James Horan finishes it and I think finishes Kerry as well Mayo as good as in the All Ireland final. Noticing that the goalkeeper was off his line, and now it's all for Kerry to do. Kerry could not respond. Mayo were in the All Ireland football final with a scoreline of two goals and 13 points to Kerry's one goal and 10. In the run-up to the second semi-final, Tommy Dowd enjoyed a puck around with some young men from his local club, Dunderry. I've always enjoyed hurling and still play senior hurling with my club whenever I can. It's nice to come up for a puck around. It takes your mind off the, the big occasion uh, when we play Tyrone and it's very relaxing, I think. I think it's fair to say that maybe Meath have come a year sooner than most people in Meath would have thought. Is that fair? Well, that would be a fair comment, Jimmy. When Mayo beat us in the National League, a lot of Meath supporters were very critical of our performance and I suppose never 
predicted that we would win a Leinster title so early, but it, it has all come all of a sudden and the team has come a long way in three or four months. Mead is used to success, so defeat wouldn't be in anybody's minds then, would it? Well, I've been talking to a lot of our supporters and they've said, fair play, you beat Dublin, we won't worry too much now if, you, if Tyrone beat you, but it would be unfair on, on uh, our players to go up to Crow Park and, and rest on our laurels, I suppose. So we'll have to we'll, uh, we'll have to produce a good game against Tyrone and maybe overcome them on the day. We were full of confidence into the Tyrone game because uh, we were underdogs and it was all kind of, the papers was all Tyrone and they weren't really giving me the chance. So that kind of gave us like, more confidence to go on and beat them. And uh, on the day, we, we, like, we played very well. I think it was the best game of the, the whole year we played as a team. And uh, things ran well for everyone. And I think it, it was the first time I think all the forwards scored and a few of the backs as well. So, you know, it was, it was a great day for me, the football. Been a lot of publicity this season, and rightly so, for the Devlins, Paul and Faye. But not all that much for Chris Long. And what a year he's had, too, in the number three jersey. Ronan McGarrity here for Tyrone. McGarrity, Pascal Canavan. Pascal Canavan, eight the coach. Tyrone playing with a confidence. Chris goes for a score. Three points to nil. Two of them from Adrian Cush. And that's a beautiful score. Cohesive movement, good passing. Confidence start by Tyrone, the Ulster champions. Trevor Giles here for me. Lucky for Brenny Riley. Breaks down now to Barry Callaghan. Looking for Meads for a score, and it is. Barry Callaghan, the scorer. Three points to one. Finbar McConnell lands it in the middle of the field. The big jumpers are up for Jimmy McGuinness for Meads. Great feeling by McGuinness at midfield. That's two big ones he's brought down. Seamus McCallum blocks it. Good block by McCallum. There's it to McGarrity. Poor pass. McManus. Ready rally for me. Ronan McGarrity going across to Fair Devlin is next in line. Breaks behind here to Cher Cavan. What a very, very good player I think he is. Peter Cannavan reacts as it goes over Fay's head. Cannavan trying to get away from Mark O'Reilly. Canavan goes for his first score. And what a great score, just as he was hit. He's only a slight fellow, Canavan, but he's wiry, and he was hit just as he's hit it. Well, he got the ball coming in from the right-hand side, and I think it was that sandwich, two Meath men coming in at the same time, and I think he took a very, very heavy amount of pressure on his lower leg. Jody Gormley tries to get a touch in that. Jody was leaning on the Meath man. Tyrone are having problems with a high ball at midfield. This is Brenny Riley. Tommy Dowd's made the run. Good run. Well timed by Dowd. Good cross it is to Barry Callahan. Over the bar. Good score by Callahan. It's as much as he could salvage from that. But what a beautiful, well timed run by Tommy Dowd that made the up. Tyrone can't do much about the midfield on Meath's possession, but they can certainly do it on their own. And Finbar McConnell's obviously up to that, he plays it wide. But even that doesn't work, and Meath have it again. Barry Callaghan. Faye Devlin stays off him. This is Graham Garrity, point there for the taking. And he has the wind in his favour too. Brenny Riley. Nice turn. Good stuff, excellent, really excellent score by Brenny Riley for the equaliser. Here's a play anywhere football, a cornerback, wingback, centre-back, half-forward, and this year's championship full forward. Jody Gormley can't get to it, again Meath winning at midfield. They're sharing the possession about, this time it's John McDermott, a terrific block by Cush who has done an immense amount of work as well as score. Tyrone leads, six points to four, in possession, Barry Callahan. Nice layoff to Brenny Riley, Trevor Giles, Graham Garrity, it's there. That's quite superb, a beautiful move for passing, 
was at a premium. A superb goal. The layoffs were terrific. In the moment Gardy got the ball, I thought of a goal he scored in the Leicester final some years ago, but he made no mistake, and he made no mistake there either. Gerard Cadlan. Brian Dewar, Martin O'Connell arrives. Good tenacity by Dewar. Jody Gormley, Dewar stays down injured. Peter Canavan. Over the bar. His master's voice. The lead for Tyrone from the captain, Peter Canavan. And he's grimacing, Peter. I think he's carrying. He seems to be carrying some kind of an injury around the groin area. Eight points to 1-4. The Ulster champions lead the Leinster champions. Pascal Canavan. Trying to get Brian Gormley away. Here's Martin O'Connell from eighth. The layoff to Graham Gurdy. Look at the pace of this man. There's a goal on here. But he's satisfied with the point. To restore equality, Graham Garrity is one of the fastest footballers in the country. Meath have scored a goal and five points, and only one of those scores has come from a place ball. Trevor Giles got that one. Trevor Giles could very well do this one right on half time. He could, he does, and it is level. Connell, I think, is signalling for Trone to calm down, settle down. There's still a long way to go in this match. It's not over yet by any means, and just to keep their cools. 15 minutes or thereabouts to go, and probably a lot added on for spoilages and injuries. Number 23 here is Adrian Kilpatrick. That's Fergal Logan. And a present of it to John McDermott. John McDermott to the totally unmarked Graham Garrity. John McLaughlin's doing his best to get to him, but Garrity has the legs, and Garrity has the skill, and Garrity is having a superb match. He is doing to Tyrone, but a lot of people thought Peter Canavan would do to me. Ger Cavlin, Pascal Canavan, Peter Canavan with Darren Fay. Peter Canavan, the block was a good block. Two me defenders went with the Tyrone captain. And Paddy Reynolds, Pascal Kahneman, just a little skirmish. Good piece of feeling by Brendan Riley. The body is sure young man he is. It's difficult to see them getting back from this. They need to be scoring a point a minute, but it's Meath who are on the warpath. And Barry Callahan knocks it over the ball. Well, at the moment, Meath are rampant. And Meath are in total control now. They can afford a wide or two. Although, of course, they would like to put as many away as possible. But the game is drifting very... Definitely away from Troon at this point. Graham Garrity, Meath have scored eight points in the second half. Meath have scored nine points in the second half. And it's 1-4 today for Graham Garrity. Forty years ago, Tyrone came to Crook Park for an All-Ireland semi-final. They lost it. They came back the next year and they lost again. Last year they came for a final and lost. Today it's a semi-final. So the team of 96, although much lauded, has not got as far as the team of 95. Jerk Cavan with the free kick. And again, it's Big McDermott with the fetch. Out to Giles. It's an exhibition of high feeling by the Meath midfield. Colin Brady dropping this down. The first time I've seen the Tyrone defence in tatters this year. Here's the man of the match, Graham Gerdy. Layoff to Barry Callahan. Callan 
get the goal. But Graham Garrity just simply adorns and crowns his award as the man of the match. And I, for one, have not seen this Tyrone defence get such a scutching. The referee calls for the ball, it's all over. You've got to say that in midfield, McDermott and McGuinness dominated for me. Graham Garrity was out of this world. The defence was terrific, particularly Martin O'Connell. The final score, two goals and 15 points to 12 points. You can't argue with that. I think actually the game that against Tyrone, myself, I scored 1-4. I think I always remember that game, I think, for the rest of my life. You know, the start of the year I was playing on the backs and I was moving up to the forwards. And lads, I was I doubts in my own mind that I could be a forward and there was doubts in other fellows' minds as well, as supporters and etc. But, uh, you know, the backs not really expected to score. When I'm up there, I got a few scores and, you know, I was probably flushed the doubts out of my own mind and everyone else's. So that was probably the, the highlight of the year for me. Another player who had a great game against Tyrone was Martin O'Connell. Seen here at work on his own meat distribution business, he is at the age of 33 a veteran in a very young team. I remember during the year, some of the lads that he had soldiered with, sort of in the 87, 88, 1991 series, um, he meet Martin meeting them and tell, telling them that he trained harder than every train before in his life, and that's the God's truth. Um, what he did, what he put in, I never thought he was going to be able to stick it. In fact, I remember saying at one stage, it would either break them all together or he'd have a fantastic gear. And that's the way it turned out. But Martin's been playing for me for the last, I think it's 10 years, and it's, it's tremendous to see fellas like that come on and playing so well. It gives a lift to the younger players as well. See that a fella like Martin and Colum Kyler are so dedicated after playing so many years. It brings, it brings the spirit into the team and it helps the younger players to play well as well. I know you're just into your 30s, that's not old, but the two boys who were playing beside you in the full back line are most definitely young. So what was it like playing with these two kids? Well, um, it was great playing with Side Down and, and uh, they were two very, very, very young lads, as you say, and, and, and willing to learn everything that, what I was trying to tell them, and, and even they'd try and tell me things, but got on very well with them and, and they were a great bunch of lads, each and every one of them. September 15th, 1996, All-Ireland final day. Meath versus Mayo. 1951 was the last year that Mayo brought the Sam Maguire Cup west of the Shannon River. It's only been eight years since Meath's last All-Ireland win and they were favourites again to lift Sam in 96. top scorer with one goal and 24 points in the 1996 championship season. If he gets this on his right foot, it'll be an excellent start for Mayo. Beautiful direction on it. There was a fist in there from Martin O'Connell, drops out to James Horan. And that's given us a point. James Horan the scorer. Mayo have broken the ice. Here's Lee McHale, has played a lot of his life as a professional basketball player. Out to Colin McMenamin. And over she goes. Need them yet to score. Mayo have scored twice. And here's a man who's handled a lot of ball in the game. Colin McMenamin. Graham Garrity for me. He's got to Brendan Riley outside him. Pat Holmes in pursuit. Now, Garrity needs somebody to come to his assistance. No, off the upright and over the bar. Needs first score. Graham Garrity, the scorer. 11 minutes gone. Take it out of the back with Enda McManus. Kelly couldn't pick it up. Mortimer can. Chance for James Horan. A big hoister, high flying point. 
Great point, Jim Torrin. His second of the game, and Mayo go double scores. That's Evan Kelly, this is Noel Canelli. Sun getting in the rise, he's going to drop back to Casey. That's Darren Fay with him. McManus as well, and they worked hard on it. Back to Morris Sherd, great block by me. Now, here's James Horn again. And it's a point as Horan, who started off this game with 1 4 in the championship, has got three points in this one game after 22 minutes. The breaking player is John McDermott. The follow up is made possible by Paddy Reynolds. Reynolds to Dowd, Dowd is floored. Pick up here by Trevor Giles. Is there a way in? Nice, good work by Giles. That's a lovely score. With the ball again is Morris Sheridan. That's a lovely strike. Lovely, lovely strike by Sheridan. In the last minute of the first half. And the point here would leave a goal between them. Trevor Giles. Hit with beautiful, cool authority. And a goal separates the champions of Leinster and the champions of Connacht. Mayo people spread throughout the world. There wouldn't be a place in the world that you wouldn't find some connection with Mayo. And so many of them have come home here today. Before the game, we were talking to Mayo people from San Diego, San Francisco, Northern Africa, East Africa, met two from Kenya. Graham Garrity got two touches on it. Volleyball style to Brendan Riley. Brendan desperately trying to get into the game. Will this be the moment? Not a bad effort. It's over the bar. Another difficult one to call, I would have thought. The Mayo goalkeeper had no doubt that it was wide. The linesman had no doubt it was a point. Mayo have it again with Colin McMenamin, who's absolutely running riot through me today. Drops behind to McHale, he'll use it, always does. Out to McManaman again. Back to McHale. He would have loved the score, but it comes to Horan. And again it's off the post. I give you 100 to 1 that, each upright for two successive kicks. Darren Fay with the clearance. The next few minutes will be crucial to the destination of Sam in 96. That's Paddy Reynolds, one of Mead's best today. Dowd got in the third man challenge and Mortimer. Every time that Mayo played Mead in an All-Ireland semi-final, Mead won it. But any time they met in the final, Mayo won it. In fact, Mead have never beaten a Connacht County in an All-Ireland final. And all of Mayo's three wins were over Leinster opposition. Leash 1936, Louth 1950, and Meath in 51. James Horn held up. Mayo playing with a lot of confidence. Paddy Reynolds leaves it behind. And lucky for him, he had a bit of cover. But what's this? It's Dempsey. Chance. Yeah! Raymond Dempsey! Just when you 
thought the danger was averted. Another mistake. Didn't make any mistake with the chance. What a crucial goal that could turn out to be. The goalie really had no chance. That's Dermot Flanagan, back to John Madden, out to Kenneth Mortimer. Now normally you'd have mean men breathing down your neck, but look at this. Three unmarked Mayo players have Meads lost it as early as this with still 22 minutes to go. David Nestor. Pissed by Martin O'Connell. Good pace by Nestor. Brady got back at him. The layoff to Dempsey. Goes through an unexistent gap. Martin O'Connell has it in his hand. Colin Brady. Over Pat Holmes is in and here comes Garrity. Just inside of his Trevor Giles. Giles goes for the score and he's got it. Wayne Garrity was complaining that he should have had a free, but he won't complain now as Giles puts it over the bar. They've got 18 minutes left in the game. 1-8 for Mayo, that's 11. 6 for Meath. Five points separates them. It's a lot in football. That's a lot to claw back in 18 minutes. But this is Meath's best spell of the game. Comes to Brendan Riley. It's over the bar. Brendan Riley, the scorer. Morris Sheridan gives it more height than he would have wished for. Mark O'Reilly for me. Liam McHale. Always Mayo was saying, one day we'll see McHale really blossom to his full potential. I think Peter McGrath, Mayo people have seen it today. Definitely, it is his best performance, I think, ever in the Mayo jersey, and he couldn't have picked a better day or a bigger stage. Colin Brady for me, Colin Brady to John McDermott. It's over the left, it's a good point. Made by Brady, finished by McDermott. And this game is not over yet. Trevor Giles. Free kick for me, is it a good one? The answer to that is yes. Very good free under pressure. Four minutes left in the All-Ireland final. Neither set of supporters can go easy into this closing stages. Enna McManus waits behind. Gets the crumbs from the table. Kenna Mortimer. Noel Canelli. James Horn. Good effort by Horn. Martin want to keep it in play. Connor Martin. Invites the challenge from Loftus. Colin Brady Meath. Unmarked Colin Coyle. Inside to Brendan Riley. Brendan Riley goes for a left footed one, and it's over the bar, and one point separates them. One point in three and a half minutes. In the centre field. A full court press here now to use a basketball term in the presence of Lee McGill. Horan for Mayo. PJ Loftus with Martin O'Connell and the redoubtable Martin having another great game. Colin Coyle. Jody Devine brings it past James Nallan. Devine dropping it in around the house. Barry Callahan trying to keep it in. Holmes has it for Mayo. Cal the fullback.
John McDermott in pursuit. He's had a good game too. Picking man of the match today won't be easy. Drops in around the house. They are level. They are level. Mighty me who won't lie down. I was delighted I was over the moon, so I was, you know. Um, we were getting on the column during the, during the year, but his uh, long pass and it wasn't, wasn't going where it was supposed to be going. So I was just asking him, who was he passing that ball to? So. <laughs> definitely looked like me. Six points ahead with 20 minutes to go. They would feel the throw away in All-Ireland, and rightly so. Um, any team to throw away six points in an All-Ireland final, it's, it's very, very, it's a, it's a body blow, really. But at the same time, we showed our true grit, and, you know, the Mead football has always been renowned for, for coming back and not stopping until the final whistle is blown, and that's, that's, the, that's the reason, I suppose, why we got a, a draw over in the last kick of the game, almost. Sunday, 29th of September, 1996, and the team's parade before the replay. The first time we've had a replay since 1988, and on that occasion, too, Meath were involved. Drawing with Cork, 1-9 to 12 points, and then going on to beat the Munster champions by one point. We had a lot of improvement to make. We felt that Mayo were a very, very good team. We may have underestimated them a little bit the first day. They still were a very strong, very physical team, some very, very good footballers. So we felt we were really up against it and we had to pull up our socks or, you know, we hadn't a chance of winning the all Aaron. There was so much nonsense being talked because we had happened to play in an all Ireland final in 1988 and won a replay in it. People felt automatically that we knew how to do it. There was no comparison. You weren't that you hadn't the same characters there. It was a different setup. People still weren't convinced and hadn't learned that this Mayo side were different. You know, they just weren't coming up for the trip. They were just weren't coming up to enjoy the thing. And that all John Maul wanted was a couple of days with them to recharge the batteries because you know, oh, it's it's to get a second chance within a fortnight rather than have to wait 12 months. What greater sport do you want? It was a question of correcting the mistakes that we have made are trying to correct them and, at and be prepared for any sort of weather because we knew that, the, that it was going to be windy weather. There was one change made on each side for the replay. Conal Brady came in at number 13 for Evan Kelly on the Meath team and it was also at number 13 that Mayo made a change. Anthony Finnerty replacing David Nestor in the full forward line. Martin O'Connell Trying to open up the play, Brendan Riley never really favoured with that particular ball. Instead, it's taken by Morris Sheridan, produced an awful lot of good work in the first match. This is James Horan, and that's going to be a sideline ball for Mayo. Give it, take a line. Give it, take a line. Colin Brady has uh, started to roam around quite a bit, but really he is a third midfielder. And Kenneth Mortimer has moved into that particular section as well. Ball forward. And the very alert defenders are there, Martin O'Connell on this occasion. Brady shot partially blocked by the aforementioned Kenneth Mortimer. And Meath had started well. With McDermott now coming forward. Chased by Noel Canelli. Oh, and the wind really took that one horribly. James Hall and press forward. An all Ireland final which still hasn't a score, but now amend that. As in the first tie, James Hall and gets the first point. And it's Mayo 1, need no score. One player I think who's really worked up for this particular tie is John Casey, full forward from Mayo. He wants to make amends for what happened here in the draw match. Sheridan kicking. Good result. His first pointed free.
Martin O'Connell has it again. Shades of his man of the match performance in 1988 against Cork in the replay that year. Giles punting it ahead into space. Goalkeeper is John Madden. Dennis Mortimer. And there's a lead player down on the ground, seems to be Graham Geraghty. That's in front of the Mayo goal. Play continues. Again, it's O'Connell. Dermot Flanagan lets it run on. The pressure over there from Barry Callahan. Good assured play, however, by Kenneth Mortimer. Short passing game. That's Connelly. Good vision to pick out McMenamin's run. He has Finnerty just ahead of him and he slips. Back it goes to Holland. Points so far, looking to double that up. He's got another one. Well, he was the player, of course, that Colin Coyle would have been marking. So Sheridan, who is uh, one point from three attempts so far. This is ideally placed for him. And no trouble. So Mayo, four points to the good. Nearly 19 minutes gone in the first half. Kicking into the canal end, which houses the men and supporters and women of the West. Nicely over the bar. So Meath off the mark eventually. And they'll now be hoping to keep it as tight as possible, heading up towards half-time. Kick-out is really taken very, very quickly. And this seems to be a male tactic this afternoon. O'Connell. Straight at Colin McMenamin. Two players to aim at. One of them is Horan. Or returned by John Casey for Pat Holmes. Casey coming deep on this particular occasion to get on the ball time and again to try and build up his confidence. Darren Fay in pursuit over there. Back towards Horan. He's been kicking very well so far. And he has kicked another beauty. Three in the first half in the first game. Three in the replay. And it's five points to one. P.J. Loftus has gone out towards the 40, followed by Martin O'Connell. Paddy Reynolds, some of the former All-Star Pat, former selector as well. Brady's knock ahead. Kenneth Mortimer is in there to chase and to win at the second attempt, but he loses it. Here's McGuinness. Hard, tough battle so far. Callahan on for Tommy Dowd. Looking to try and curl one in and boost his own confidence and he's done exactly that that will be a huge lift for the Meath captain and a huge lift for the fans of the team as well although you're wearing number 11 you're up nearer the goal and you had one of your best games ever I suppose well I suppose I felt a little bit happier in there because I was a little bit closer to the goal I, I hadn't scored in the last two previous games and there was a lot of supporters I suppose you could say on me back but I suppose when you're when you get a, a score maybe early on, you, your confidence kind of comes back to you a little bit and I suppose there was no better game to play in than an All-Ireland final. Mayo, I'm sure, will feel that a three-point lead at this stage playing with the wind behind them is insufficient. Trevor Giles winning the free kick. Good ball forward, at three, so it seemed to us Jimmy McGuinness took his eye off it and it's Kenneth Mortimer, that man once again. Brady. This is Canelli. And Finnerty claiming quite clearly he's been held back there. But it's on to Peter Loftus. Here's a goal shot. And he's got it. PJ Loftus, the substitute, doing exactly what the man he replaced did in the original match. Finding the back of Conor Martin's net. It was a terrific ball forward there by Noel Canelli. 
Mark O'Reilly couldn't get it away cleanly. But in came Loftus, and that's a peach of a finish. He was just given enough room. Oh, John Madden coming out, and he hasn't got it. Oh, that's across the line. And the referee saying that it's a penalty, I think. But John Madden was just a little indecisive. Just over a minute after Mayo scored their goal. Here's Trevor Giles against Fountain, and a brilliant penalty. That was terrific skill by Trevor Giles. John Madden could only look at that. That's how to take the penalty. Watch this, right into the corner. No real margin for error. Brilliant score. We're into injury time on what's proving a very dull afternoon weather-wise. Let's hope this match will brighten up. Just a few steps up, and over it goes. Third point for Morris Sheridan from Baal, and it's 1-6 to 1-2, but will four points be enough at half-time, having played with the wind and the driving rain? Mayo were playing superbly well. I felt that the game had improved even 50% on the previous day. The main thing was, you know, we were still able to hang in there and when we got the penalty and Trevor stuck it away, you know, magnificent penalty, it, it raised us and kept us in touch with the game because there was a huge wind out there, strong wind. Now you were against a team who were physically much bigger and much stronger than we were, so it was going to take a, a, a huge effort to, to stay in there, hang in there. We went in at half time and lads were kind of giving out and shouting on this but Sean came in and told the boys to settle down it was only I think four, four, or three or four points in it at the time and there was a gale force wind Sean just told the fellas to settle down at half time play as we normally play and not to be using the wind as much kicking in high balls but it's very hard to have a nigga out and the high ball did work sometimes we got the goal off it but it was generally just to calm down and play as we were playing the second half we got two points, I think, in 40 seconds or whatever it was. And uh, it seemed to really lift the team and lift the supporters. So Pat McAdini gets the second 35 minutes underway after that fairly eventful opening half. Ender McManus taking the first three of the second half down as far as Tommy Dowd. Going for glory with the first kick of the second half. Great point by Tommy Dowd. We've been saying in the build-up that he's due a big one. And this might be the day for the Meath captain. So first attack, and the lead is now down to three points. Mayo doing a bit more fouling in this match than was the case in the drawn match, where they just gave away 12 free kicks. Already they've given away, I think, 11 in this particular final. Here's Trevor Giles onto his left boot. They are just eating into this lead. So ridiculously early in the second half. A goal and two points of that tally now for Trevor Giles. It really is a noisy scene here now. Mayo beginning to dig quite deep trying to demonstrate what character they've got and trying to hang on to their two-point lead Casey low ball inside towards James Nolan goal scorer against Kerry back it goes to Casey and he's got the score that's a very good point by Casey it was a good ball to Nolan and a nice return and a fine point at the end of all of that. Mayo lead by three points. <laughs> Kenneth Mortimer back there, facing his own end line, challenged by Graham Geraghty. Once again, it's Pat Fallon. Now Colin McManaman. He loses it. 
does well to regain it. It's the second time he's lost it in this half and gone back to win possession for his team. Kevin Carl, now Pat Holmes. We've had showers, we've had wind, now we've got sunshine. Still the breeze backing Leeds, playing in the gold in the second half. And that's a great kick from Trevor Giles. A goal and three points for the young man from screen, who's of course on a football scholarship at UCD. Nallon. That final pass for Mayo from midfield has been letting them down time and again. Colin Brady picking out Tommy Dowd. This time Barry Callaghan wanted to get on the act and doing so splendidly. We were asking questions just a minute ago about the Meath resolve. No question or doubt about that. John Casey is going across there to take the ball from lines with Kevin Walsh. In for James Horan. Oh, and Connor Martin, instead of catching up, to fist it away as far as possible from the danger area. Perhaps the wind confused him somewhat. Bright afternoon now after a day which started with shower after shower. And of course we had gale force winds here last night as well. Mayo working it short. Sheridan. This time it's over the bar. Another point for Boris Sheridan. Lovely, intricate passing movement that time. It ends up being 1-9 to 1-7. That time, instead of aimlessly kicking it anywhere, there were three players in the build-up, and when it came eventually to Morris Sheridan, this is where he got his fifth point of the match. And he puts two between them. At a stage in the match where every opportunity and every attack has to yield something. Just over 15 minutes to go. He has scored two points from two frees so far. This, in a very scorable position, that's the goal and four points for Trevor Giles. Callaghan kicking into space. Tommy Dowd making it his. The block is by Pat Holmes, the support by Colin McManaman. He has a terrific engine. Keeps on motoring. Holmes. Out to Brady, we missed that chance just seconds ago. Finity now, against him Mark O'Reilly. Mayo hoping to finish here with yet another score, to put two between the teams once more. Will it curl in for Horan? And it does! James Horan has got his fourth point. Well, he'll be delighted with his own contribution of seven points from two All-Ireland final appearances. He'll be even happier if Mayo can stay ahead at the finish this time. 1-10 to 1-8. Mayo will be in no particular rush. They were in no particular rush with many of their kickouts two weeks ago. This time they're just trying to make sure that the passes are well delivered into space. The others have to do the work for the man on the ball, however. Casey here. Again, using up a few seconds. Oh, and gifting it after that to Ender McManus. And now the onus is with me. Can they seize the initiative once again here as Tommy Dow breaks it? Expects somebody to come in on it. Graham Garrity is that somebody. Challenged by Pat Holmes. Free taken very quickly. Tommy Dow here. Tripped. And the referee allows it, I think. The goal counts. And Tommy Dow has got a goal and three points. The ball was come in high and it was I was just staying down for the break and the break came down, I was just said I'll give this into Tommy now, but it seemed to be forever trying to get it out and I was fouled down and just took a quick free and Tommy I thought he was never gonna put it in the net because he sold it and fell on the ground and eventually got it in. It was a great goal. The first instinct I had was to fist it over the bar, but the opportunity was there for a goal and we needed a goal at that that stage to bring us back into the game and I was lucky enough to get around the keeper and he got his hand to my leg as I was and I was falling to the ground but I was lucky enough to swing me, me, me leg to it on the ground and over the line after that.
I was very tired up to that, but after that I felt I could play for another 70 minutes, Jimmy. It was a great feeling to see all the flag shaking on Hill 16 again after that. We had a new lease to life, I think. Brady, on for James Nellon. Strong defence there by John McDermott. Out it comes towards James Horan, and Horan has kicked it over, and the sides are level. And they're level for just the first time in this match. And Holland has got a magnificent five points, all of them from play. Me as Leinster champions on 18 occasions, looking to try and win Sam Maguire for just the sixth time. Tom Riley about to come in for Mayo. Free quickly taken inside towards McGuinness. Look where Darren Fay is. And look where Paddy Reynolds is, up over his head to try and be the hero here. McGuinness back in. One back there, however, by a determined Kevin Cahill. Out it goes to Pat Holmes. Players calling for it like Morris Sheridan outside here. Just over a minute and a half to go. Sides level. And Graham Geraghty very, very annoyed with the referee's decision, which goes against me. Free to Mayo. Morris Sheridan with uh, David Brady and uh, James Nallon in support. Nallon once again. We're inside the last minute. Will it go to two periods of extra time? 70 minutes the last time. Couldn't decide this one. Here's Brendan Riley. Will he be the All-Ireland final hero? Trying to set up a chance. The angle shot and it's gone over. Brendan Riley has kicked his first point of the match but about 18 seconds to go delight on Hill 16 so it'll be all eyes on the referee as John Madden kicks out Mayo have it it's Morris Sheridan next in line is James Nellon they've got to work it forward Brady trying to find a colleague somehow Meath good at grouping and closing down the space for the opponent. David Brady with, Brady with the free kick. He leaves it for Morris Sheridan to kick from the hands. And the referee could have penalised Colin Brady there for not retreating quick enough so that the kick could be taken. But instead he's saying back into the position from which it should have been kicked. Sheridan, possession absolutely of great importance here. Riley in, Fallon challenging, but it's Conor Martin who has it. Mead holding on, Jimmy McGuinness. It's one back by PJ Loftus, Casey has it next. Back from Hall and John Casey taking it side towards Tom Riley, the substitute, the block there, superbly executed. And it's all over. Mead have won the All-Ireland. Sean Boylan's men had a tough battle over two games against a very game Mayo side Brendan Riley with his only point of the match Tommy Dowd of course the goal scorer in the second half but Riley was the hero at the end of all of that on a day when Meath had 15, 16, 17, maybe 18 heroes but it was so, so close full credit to both teams for giving us an enthralling second half and they're absolutely devastated, these Mayo players. They would have felt they deserved at the very least an extra half an hour's football. Yeah, actually, the first part I did see was we fouled because uh, I, when the game was over, I was, I was hugging and kissing Trevor Giles. And the uh, first thing I done then was thrown over to where the, the cup was being presented before everyone came on and mobbed everyone else. But uh, the first person I did meet was we father and. I think it was okay when they got to him and then they started getting a bit emotional then, but uh, he was the first person that meant something to really, you know. What did he say to you? He didn't say that, he just grabbed me and that was it. I couldn't really hear him anyway. What did just, you say to him? I says we have it now and that's it. So, you know, I was delighted over the moon and so was he. And it was, it was a great day for myself and my family as well. And they were just delighted it was, it was all over and we won. When you were a young boy, who was the first one you ever remembered watching it on television or being there lifting the Sam Maguire Cup? Um, I think Tim Kennelly from Kerry in one of the 
one of the four in a row that they have won. He was the first man that comes into my mind straight away. And, you know, you always wonder, will you ever be up there yourself someday? It's something you always dream about. And now that it's come through, I, I just can't believe it, Jimmy. It's, it's a great feeling and will always be with me for the rest of my life. Was it the sweetest of the three All Ireland? It certainly ranks us as you know, like '87 because it had been so long was absolutely extraordinary. To do it a second time uh, because it was the new Sam was a major thing. Um, the big thing about '87 was a lot of the players have been around for an awful long time. Like in '86 when we won a Leinster, it was our first Leinster in 16 years. It was the first All Ireland final in 20 years, and. It was, so, it was so sweet to actually compete and to win those. But in this case, you had a lot of what would, would, be, would be termed like rookies who were out there. And uh, for them...